Hello everyone, a bit more of an esoteric video here. Uh, so coming up on June 14th, 2022 is the day of the full moon, also known as a super moon this month. I believe also a strawberry super moon, whatever they're calling it. And um, it is also Sagadawa or Sagadava making June 14th the single most important day of the year for Tibetan Buddhists. Also making it the most important full moon of the year, it is believed that good deeds, prayers, meditation and really any spiritual efforts and practices are multiplied by 100,000 during this period. So I'm going to leave a bunch of uh, links and resources if you want to read more into all of this. So yes, it is the month of merit. Uh, this time is also the period of Gemini which it is also believed that the masters in the superior worlds put more efforts into helping humanity with astral projection. So as a result, on June 14th, on the full moon, the Gnostic Method app will be released. If you're interested in the Gnostic teachings, which I've talked about so much throughout my work, then I recommend downloading this app. Uh, another video will be released on it on June 14th that you can... Uh, check out and see if it's for you. So yes, it's being released on the full moon and doing so, releasing it on that day, gives us uh, benefits or gives the app some benefits in terms of uh, reaching the most people, having a positive response. And yeah, so we're gonna, we're going to look into that and, and why that when we release uh, or do things on full moons, uh, there is uh, an impact, an energetic impact, so to speak. You know, let's start with uh, why. Why is this full moon significant? And, you know, also why is the moon significant at all? Uh, this is something I've not yet covered in depth on the channel, but it's something I've always been aware of, especially in terms of my own personal meditative and astral experiences, uh, most notably that a lot of my most significant experiences were during full moons. And, you know, this is something I was quite surprised to find out about. In a lot of esoteric teachings, you'll find that the astral body is also called the emotional body. And so during full moons, our emotions are, you could say, amplified. Not specifically in any good or bad or spiritual emotions, but just our emotional body in general. So whether a person is angry, happy, sad, paranoid, spiritual, whatever emotions we are having during a full moon are amplified. This is why you'll see there are many studies showing that there are more crimes during full moons and also why the word lunatic comes from the word lunar because people can either become more crazy or more happy or more serene, etc. So the moon amplifies and the full moon on June 14th is considered the strongest amplification of the year. Uh, actually, as well, when I've talked to people about this topic, I tell them to look at their astral projection diary and check the date on there and then uh, check it with what moon phase it was during their most significant experiences. I'd say 90% of the time it's during a waxing period or full moon. Have a check yourself and comment below. I know personally, for example, my very first astral projection experience was during a full moon too as well. Um, so yeah, uh, but we don't want to have to rely on the full moon or just the moon for these experiences. And this is what we'll look into on this video about the role of the moon and freeing ourselves from having to rely on you know, moon phases. So Samael on Veor alludes to the purpose of the moon very well in this quote. The moon, like the weight of a great clock, makes the terrestrial machinery move. 
the sprouting of vegetables, the animals, ovulation in women, the flux and reflux of the ocean, high and low tides, etc., all depend on the moon. Since life is so mechanical, if triumphing is what is really required, then the moon must be taken advantage of. The waxing crescent moon, as well as the full moon, is for our activities. If we want to triumph in any activity or in business, inevitably we will have to take advantage of the waxing crescent moon and the full moon. So let's look at this aspect a little bit deeper and also how we can best work with the energies of the moon by understanding its implications. Uh, this is all based in the symbolic nature of our human terrestrial consciousness, uh, astrology, and other esoteric teachings. This is a science, but a spiritual one that requires meditation and experience to really understand. But let's try and understand it here anyway. Um, I just recommend listening in a meditative way on where I'm about to go with this. Uh, try not to think about what I'm saying too much, but, you know, just walk with me, with your consciousness, through the ideas. So, this moon goes through its swinging pendulum, constantly going through its waxing and waning phases, and in so many regards, this up and down mechanism, this cycle, is reflected in so many parts of nature and our life. For example, day and night, summer and winter, waking and sleeping. The animals hibernate and they also have a mating season. The trees wilt and they blossom. The tides of the sea go in and out. The emotional waters, right? Remember the sacral chakra is the element of water. Uh, we are born and we die. Now, you can see in this sense, nature is mechanical. We usually think of nature as a sort of organic randomness. But truly, if we adopt a scientific perspective, nature is actually an advanced machinery, a technology. It is mechanical. Now, remember, as above, so below, as within, so without. Nature is not separate from us. The things that we observe outside of us and the way nature works is not separate from that of within. Nature is a reflection of what we are, of what we have within. And what we have within, we also reflect outside of us. Therefore, we are also mechanical. But the problem is, most of us don't realize this, right? We are blind to our mechanical nature. We do not see how we live mechanically like the tides of the sea. For example, one day we are very happy, another day we are very sad. One day we are angry, another day we are calm. During one week we are very depressed about our life, and the next week we feel more optimistic. And the cycle just continues throughout our life, you know? Perhaps in the morning we feel very positive, and every night we feel a lonely depression as we go to sleep. We are mechanical and also unconscious of these emotions that we go through and the psychological states of mind that encompass our being. We do not know how to control these emotions. They control us. We do not understand the mechanisms behind the tides of energy that we repeat throughout our entire life. This is what the Gnostic teachings call the law of the pendulum. Uh, I highly recommend checking out a video on this Law of the Pendulum on another YouTube channel. The link is in the description. So sometimes people say that we have to overcome the moon. And in a way, that's correct. But it's not that we have to destroy it or hate it, right? We don't have to hate our 
mechanicalness, but simply become aware and conscious of how it works. And we do this by understanding our own mechanical nature. This also relates to the video I made about our psychological songs and how we repeat the same mental melodies over and over. So this is why the moon is often related in psychology and spirituality to the subconscious or unconscious part of ourselves, because it reflects the hypnotic state of humanity. It is that lunar body in space that keeps us dreaming, asleep, fascinated with earthly, worldly, terrestrial, lunar things. And as above, so below, we are uh, and we have a lunar body in this sense. And this is also reflected in the fact that there is a dark side of the moon that we never see, just like how we never see our subconscious. We only ever see one side. And to add to that, we only have a full one side of the moon lit for just 12 days of the year. So essentially, we have just 12 easier days where we can see our subconscious surface a bit more. It's not a lot, right? Out of the 365 days of the year. So this subconsciousness is what we want to bring to light, right? That is how we awaken. That is the path to become conscious of the unconscious, to be conscious of the subconscious mind. And because we don't see the subconscious, most of us underestimate it. It is truly vast enormous. I mean, it is the majority of what makes us, us. In other words, we are almost 100% unconscious. It's a huge mistake to think that we are awake and that we have a sl the slightest idea of what it means to be conscious of the subconscious. You know, we have little uh, ideas here and there of what our subconscious might be like, but truly, it is a tremendous work. And most of modern psychology agrees with this too. And that's really something, you know, but it's really something that most people just will deny very quickly or, or really struggle to understand. Uh, for example, most people would say that or agree, or think that we have free will, right? How? How do we have free will when we are unconscious? How obvious it is that we succumb to unconscious and negative impulses and habits and reactions and emotions, etc. You know, how many of us can watch the news without being identified with it? How many of us can be insulted by another without being offended, without being identified with the situation? How many of us can't stop thinking and worrying about what we should eat tomorrow, about how we are going to pay the bills for this month, about the latest gossip in the media, etc. This is all conditioning. This is all being ruled by ourself. We are imprisoned to ourself and that is not free will. So free will is not this idea that, uh, you know, a god in the sky is judging us and uh, telling us we can't do this and we can do this. The reality is that the conditioning or the fact that we don't have free will comes from within. We are imprisoned to ourself. So free will is something that is created, which is liberated. And to add to all of that, you know, we think we have free will because we have never tried to work against our lunar self. We have never tried to understand or feel the force of our impulses and how they control us. We have never tried to work against our negative impulses and reactions. If we did, we would know truly just how hard it is to 
swim against the current, so to speak. We would know just how much we do not have free will, but that we are controlled by the impulses of, not just from within, but of a foreign force. Call it the collective mind, call it the lunar energies, call it the unconscious, whatever. You know, we are controlled by this darkness. So, you know, sometimes when we think of the subconscious, we think of it in terms of, oh, it's us, our our dear and personal subconscious. But where do we get the subconscious from? We get it from the world and our conditioning. And therefore, it is not part of us. It is foreign. So it's really like a grave mistake to identify with anything that we see in our subconscious. So if you really observe this in your life, it is very clear that there is a current of unconscious chaos that we follow day to day. This nine to five cycle of being a busy ant worker and never withdrawing into the great space of what is beyond all of this mechanicity. You know, when our mind wanders, that is the lunar forces. When we yawn, when someone is telling us vital information, that is the lunar forces bringing us back to the lunar collective current of life. When we meditate and feel tired, that is this pull to go back to this sleepy, dreamy consciousness, hypnotized into the world of our own subconscious dreams. You can probably notice it now through this video. You're probably going to hear some things you don't like and you're going to react. Well, instead of just reacting, have self-observation. Look into why you really feel that way. Or perhaps you do recognize the truth, but you become very sleepy and bored as you listen. Why? Because the lunar forces are shutting you down. So... What are we to do? Well, we have something in the Gnostic teachings which refers to creating our own psychological moon, which means not using that chaotic, unconscious, collective moon of humanity, but using our own moon, our own emotions that derive not from a foreign force, from the collective but from our own individual consciousness. And how do we do that? Well, let's begin with the facts from the beginning of our life. Throughout the course of our life, we, as an essence, as awareness at our fundamental basis, we received impressions, right? Impressions from life, events, people, things from the world. We perceive all of this and it is fed straight into our susceptible mind. These are not just physical impressions, but impressions also of a psychic nature. For example, when we were children, when we watched the news and also our unconscious parents, we were very impressionable right? Anything that the news, parents, or the rest of the world told us, we instantly believed and accepted as truth, therefore instantly creating a reality, a lunar reality, a subconscious reality. We became conditioned by unconsciousness. Why? Why did we become so conditioned, so easily and let the world rule our perceptions over life because we were never taught or never shown consciousness or you could also say that we were taught how to just hide the consciousness not necessarily on purpose but that's just the state of uh, of humanity right so Consciousness, this conscious awareness that you feel when you're being present and you're liberating and you're starting to awaken, right? This consciousness 
is what awakens us, what gives us that power of individualized observation. It's important to understand that we, you know, before any kind of spiritual practice, we never had this individualized observation growing up as an individual, right? Therefore, we are not individuals. We are more like ideologues, meaning we are the result of just ideas, of just thought forms that have conditioned us, that we have become attached to. So how can we be individuals if all we were fed were the unconscious impressions of the external lunar current of life? A person becomes an individual when they learn to swim against the current, swim in the opposite direction, or just detach from the currents completely. So to do that, we don't want to ignore this lunar life, right? Because this is where we have all our attachments. We have to understand it. And so we want to transform the impressions from this current through our consciousness. We want to transmute the impressions, to transmute lead, the moon, into gold the sun. For example, let's say a family member calls us and tells us they've been robbed. We could, without any consciousness, any conscious awareness, react in the lunar way that all of humanity would react, right? We become shocked, we get angry at the thief, we blame our family member for being careless, we think about money, we argue about many things, etc. This was an unconscious reaction. We became fascinated, hypnotized with the situation, and therefore we behaved in accordance with our subconscious conditioning, right? We are mechanical. That is very predictable, the way that we would behave, right? I mean, you can apply this to imagining uh, all your close friends and family, right? You can pretend to call them and say certain things and you just you instantly know how they will react because they are mechanical they are predictable they have certain mechanisms in them that will trigger when they are faced with certain impressions right we are just robots we really have to realize this and see it in more importantly see it in our own personal life and our, and experience so that we can stop being robots and become real human beings this is you know totally related to the story of pinocchio pinocchio is always telling himself or lying to himself that he is a real boy but he's not because he's lying. And then eventually, you know, as he starts to become a more virtuous person, a more sincere and honest person, and starts to really see his life for what it is and see himself for what he is, he becomes a real boy. He becomes a real human being. Now, so if we go back to, uh, you know, the family member calling us about, uh, you know, they've been robbed and we're, we're reacting, well, Let's instead imagine that we were conscious in those moments and we remembered ourselves. We were totally grounded in our direct reality and not possessed by psychological entities and conditioning, right? We would bring conscious awareness to our impulses and not allow that impression of our family member calling us we would not allow that impression to control the mind and let the mind run off like a scared or angry dog into the darkness and unconsciousness of just absolutely no self-control. You can practice this and, and see it. You can confirm it in experience. You know, meditate all day. Have a relaxing, lovely day. Have perfect awareness and then see if something dramatic happens and you become identified with the situation and you realize afterwards that you lost your consciousness. You were acting unconsciously, right? You totally lost all the serenity, all the peace and all the spiritual vigor that you had been 
working towards just completely got drained. So when we lose awareness like this at any point, we are going back to that unconscious lunar current. And a lot of us, you know, I, I get questions about this, you know, how do I stay conscious with unconscious people or all my kind of problems and challenges and adversities of life? And uh, well, you know, we react to that as well. We we dream about uh, that because we have kind of self delusions. We think we are, you know, really great and spiritual or we just react to the fact that you know, our ego says, I don't want this. I don't want to uh, be dealing with all these situations. Or you start to feel so bad about yourself because you can't stay present in unconscious situations. All of that is just to be more. They are just opportunities to become more aware of, you know, what is really happening and and become aware of this lunar current that we are attached to. Okay, so, you know, it's not easy. It's a work, but it's definitely uh, a much better opportunity to know what exists within us at any given point of being unconscious so that we can bring the solar light of awareness to that unconsciousness so that we can really see it and be honest and sincere and really not lie about ourselves about who, what we think we are and if, thinking we are enlightened you know like pinocchio who thinks he is uh this or that but he is not and you know his his nose grows and yeah so we need to just simply see it with consciousness so when I say that we receive all these impressions of life through our senses and experience, what I'm really pointing towards is that these impressions make us unconscious. Why? Because we don't know how to transform the impressions. In other words, we don't know how to digest the impressions and experiences of life. We react, become angry upset, overthink, etc., right? We have an experience, something happens, and we create a problem out of it. Always creating problems out of experiences, not realizing we have a choice about to be conscious, right? Not realizing we have the choice to handle them with ease, wisdom, and insight if we just did not succumb to our lunar behaviors. So to understand the the psychological mechanisms a bit more here, you know, we have a physical body, right? We have to nourish it with food. Uh, our body transforms the food and creates nutrients. We also breathe in air and it transforms the impressions of air for our blood, right? Now, in the same way that we have a physical body, we also have to take care of our mind. We have to keep it healthy, like the body. But our mind receives impressions without any transformation, without any digestion. What is the digestive organ for our mind? It is consciousness. For example, how many people watched the events on the news in the past few years and became spiritually constipated, right? Almost everyone. Rare it is that anyone watched the news the past few years with perfect inner equilibrium and detachment. We all couldn't process or deal with or accept new viruses, wars, celebrity gossip, etc., right? We couldn't stay conscious in the face of them. We became identical identified with them, psychologically identified with the ideas that were fed to us. We didn't know how to transform those impressions that we received through the senses. We stayed lunar. We stayed in the mechanicity of nature and did nothing more. We only just contributed to the stream of collective unconsciousness and did nothing more. 
For those who felt justified in, you know, feeling that way and reacting to the news, well, what or how did that and how did reacting to all of that help you or others in any way? What did you do to help the situation? Nothing. Because you can't so as long as you are at the whim of the lunar currents of life. We cannot solve problems if we are drowned in the currents of life. There is no intelligent comprehension or objective detachment from the situations in life. And we can apply this same principle to all of the problems in our life. We never solve our problems because we react and don't know how to transform a situation. We don't know how to transform impressions in order to see other perspectives and you know as i said there is this lunar current everyone is swimming in the same sh chaotic stream and and just you know we're, we're not swimming right the, sh the stream is just pushing us and so we can't see the stream if we are just being swept by the stream we have to step out of it and look at it from a higher perspective in order to see the patterns in order to see the causes of the problems in order to see how to solve a problem etc and so to transform impressions we have to not forget ourselves during any kinds of impressions whether good bad dramatic gossip etc we have to remember ourselves for example if someone is insulting us if we are conscious during those moments and remember ourselves we can stop the negative impression entering our mind and instead transform it with the light of conscious awareness in other words we use a solar force not a lunar force right because that negative impression is coming in and it is telling us oh, you know, this is an, an angry person. And this the person telling us believes and expects us to behave in a certain way. And so there is a psychic lunar current being sent to us. And we have to perceive that and become conscious of that and see the causes of that. And so if we understand that this is all just a temptation to be conditioned, then we can respond in a more intelligent way, right? We can have compassion for the person. We can maybe ask the person, how are they feeling? Did something else happen? Uh, is there anything I can do to help? Instead of just, you know, reacting. So by doing this, by responding intelligently to life, we stop feeding the lunar body and instead we feed our solar body, our solar astral body. We start to generate a field of individualized, right? We become an individual because we are not conditioned by these kind of socio-normative norms of, of lunar currents, right? We generate this field of conscious presence that strengthens our solar body. We gain our own aura, so to speak. Eventually, through practice, we generate a permanent center of gravity with total freedom from the lunar currents. We are not influenced by them anymore. You know, we don't become bored. We don't become tired when meditating. We stop reacting unconsciously. We don't experience any disruptions to our spiritual efforts and we don't become identified with the situations of life anymore and we don't become identified with our self either, right? Because as we saw before, our self is mostly unconscious. So we can't identify with uh, that unconsciousness. If we have to identify with anything, it is better to identify with our inner being or higher self or inner God, right? Divinity. So as with the many things we've talked about in this channel and on the chakra series, we need self-remembering, self-observation, 
transformation of impressions and destruction of the ego, which is attached to this lunar consciousness. And to also ask divinity for help with all of this, to help us to overcome the lunar forces that trap us and keep our consciousness asleep. And, you know, you might think, wow, the the moon is actually very evil, <laughs> but it's not. It just holds our darkness, or we've put the darkness there, so to speak. And we have to work with that darkness because our light, our essence is trapped there. Remember that the moon is described as feminine throughout many teachings, feminine being darkness. So we don't ignore or hate that darkness, but we have to honor it and work with it. And we can take advantage of the moon with its amplified energy because when it is waxing and going into a full moon, emotions are going upwards and amplified. We feel a bit better, more empowered, mechanically speaking. And we can use this for spiritual efforts as well as business, starting new projects, uh, because other people are around us are feeling, you know, a bit more alive rather than a robot, right? <laughs> um, and as you can see, the lunar force, then, the moon is a challenge. It is not something to worship, like you see in witchcraft and things like this, but it is something to understand. It is the moon that keeps us asleep and dreaming about our life. You know, even if our life is spiritual and we do many good deeds, well, we can still be dreaming about that good life, uh, that good spiritual life. We don't want to be dreaming about our life, right? We want to be here from moment to moment, actually living our life in a solar way. So it is by working with the moon that we can find our challenges and see where it has its claws in controlling us. If we want to escape nature, if we want to escape samsara, if we want to escape the cycle of life and death, then we must understand the lunar energies and how she keeps us asleep. We don't hate it, but give thanks because all of our unconsciousness resides there. All of our hidden treasures resides there. So, and you know, you hear a lot about uh, prison planet theory and how the moon controls humanity, but all these sort of conspiracies are just superficial reflections of the deeper spiritual truth, that it is us that traps ourselves in lunar energies by our attachments to it. So yes, we are in a prison, but we have imprisoned ourselves and we need to become conscious of that. It's nothing to do with Illuminati and, and other kind of uh, evil beings trying to put us into some kind of hell and, and prison as there. Sure, there may be some forces like that that exist, but fundamentally... It is our responsibility to free ourselves from those movements, those forces within ourselves. Um, yes. <laughs> okay, so if you found this interesting, uh, the creator of the Gnostic Method app that will be released uh, in a few days on June 14th, uh, he wrote a PDF file expanding more deeply on how to work with the moon. I recommend reading it and, and meditating on that too. It's in the description below, along with other uh, complementary resources. So, yes, <laughs> I just want to encourage everyone to use the full moon of today and this time of Sagadawa to amplify your spiritual longings, do more practices and deepen your connection to your inner being. Use this opportunity to become aware of yourself and see the unconscious rising within yourself and also, you know, transform the impressions of life, disconnect from this lunar current so that nothing causes you unconsciousness anymore, so that you stay in your own center of gravity and not be caught up in the currents of life, rebel against this lunar body, 
not rebel in a mischievous or hateful way, but intelligently rebel or repel those forces so that you can have some space in your consciousness to see life, to see your dreams, to see the astral and have experiences during meditation. So, you know, this is an esoteric understanding to completely disconnect from the moon and instead connect with the sun. You know, do we want to just have 12 days of the year of full moons where we feel a bit more happier, a bit more spiritual and a bit more aware? Or do we want 365 days of the year with our inner sun burning brightly? That's where we want to live with the sun, not on the cold, desolate, dark moon, right? <laughs> okay, well, thank you, everyone. Um... I will release a video in a few days and much love to you all and see you all soon.